Hey guys, oh, it has been a while since my last project, but I'm not going to apologize because that's pretty much becoming my new intro and honestly, I'm not super thrilled about that. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. Instead of making a game like I usually do, I'm going to be giving the AIs a body and they will kind of attempt to learn to control that body. Kind of like a baby giraffe learning to walk or like a computer science student learning to socialize. It's basically going to be like the game Evolution. If you don't know what Evolution is, you basically play God a little bit and build a creature and that f***er kind of flops around until it learns to walk. Although I'm not going to be copying it exactly because, well, first of all, that's low-key intellectual property theft, but also because I do have some problems with it. Well, it's more like some things I would do differently. And I just want to make it clear that Evolution is amazing and fantastic and a top-tier game. I fucking love it. I say that because my channel's kind of got to the point where whenever I insult something or someone, they usually hear about it, which is fantastic. But I'm not going to stop ripping people off because that's like 90% of my content nowadays. So I'll just compliment them before I insult them. That, that way they can't be mad. So the game's good. Now that I've got that out of the way, let me tell you why it's shit. First of all, the creatures don't really have any substance to them. They're just kind of made of bones and muscle, which means they just kind of flop around. So instead, I'm going to make my creatures out of a bunch of 2D shapes. Like, here's a circle with some legs. Pretty simple, right? Although, to make this creature an evolution, well, let's just say, good luck. Kill me! <laughs> The second thing that I'm going to change is the way in which the players move around. Evolution works with muscles, which is pretty dope, and it's much more similar to how actual creatures get around than what I'm going to do, but I think it's more intuitive to have motors on the joints instead of having a f ton of muscles. Like, back to our little circle, dude, instead of connecting up a complicated webbing of muscles to try and move the damn thing, we can just say, okay, this creature can move by rotating these joints. The third thing to improve is the evolution algorithm. The one the creator used is rather basic, and I'm not saying it's not impressive, it's just not exactly the most advanced evolution algorithm. For people who've been watching me for a while, this is the same algorithm that I used on my very first videos. So as an upgrade, I'll be slapping on the best evolutionary algorithm I know, which is neat. Also, this way, you guys have something to say in the comments section while pretending to have a sense of humor. You f***ing idiots. The final thing is evolution is great for simple creatures, which has only a couple of joints and muscles, something like this. However, as soon as you try to make more complicated creatures, it struggles. This is mainly caused by the game shitting itself when you try to simulate more than 30 complicated creatures at once. And if you dare to dream and set it to simulate like 100 at a time, then the game just actually fucking dies. So I'll be trying to improve the efficiency a lot. Now I just gotta put my money where my mouth is and actually build the damn thing. Cause funnily enough, shitting on something is significantly easier than making it yourself. All right, so we're gonna need to use physics engines to simulate the movement of the creatures. And you know what that means? It's box duty time. Woohoo! <laughs> So for people who don't know, I've had a bit of a complicated relationship with Box2D. It's kind of a love-hate sort of relationship. Ah, uh, no, that's that's a lie. There's no love here. <laughs> Although on this day, I will put this feud behind me because we are making a Box2D editor. <laughs> Uh, so previously, in order to make anything in Box 2D, let's say a 2D box, which has got to be the simplest fucking thing anybody could make, you have to specify the position of the body, the rotation of the body, the position of the box within the body, the rotation of the box within the body, the width and the height of the box within the body, the density of the box, the restitution of the box, the friction of the box, whether the box is kinematic, static, or dynamic, and do all that while dealing with multiple coordinate systems, and then if you fuck up any of this, the whole program decides it's a good idea to smash a pound of cocaine and wick the fuck out. <gasps> and once you've done all that, you end up with this. Very nice. That's not even mentioning how to define more complicated shapes, how to connect objects together, and that you can't do concave shapes because it shits itself, and that you have to define vertices clockwise or it shits itself, and everything is so fucking complicated, and I'm getting fucking triggered. Sorry, I'm just reliving my previous traumatic experiences. I'll, I'll be all right. All right, so what's the plan to fix it? Well, instead of defining everything hyper-specifically in the program, I want to build a program to handle all that shit for me and just tell it I want a fucking box. There are programs which already exist which do this sort of thing, but I eventually want to incorporate this into the evolutionary program game thing. Also, it costs like $50, you fucking kidding me? I could make this in like an hour. Easy, easy. See? Easy. Easy, mate. I didn't even completely regret this decision. <laughs> Not at all. So I built the thing and it only cost me my sanity and the lower portion of my body. Look, it's gone. I don't even know how that happened. It's, it's been a hell of a week. Let's give you a tour of my most recent source of PTSD. My Box 2D editor. So remember how much of a bitch it was to make a fucking box fallen? Let me show you how quick and easy it is now. Oi, give me a box, mate. Nah, nah, a bit bigger, eh? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so what if you're a f***ing madman and want to simulate more than a box? Well, just sit the f*** down and watch some history being made. Boom! We got a circle. Look at that shit. You want, you want a triangle? Easy. <laughs> you want pyramids? We got it. Okay, so you get it. It does shit. You can, like, connect objects and joints and shit. It does shit. It does shit. Okay, right. That's enough f***ing around. Let's make a creature.
There he is. What a beast. Let's let's play it. Let's go, go, gadget physics. Oh, wait. Yep. Sorry. My bad. Um, that makes sense. And strike. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, so we probably should attach stuff together. Uh, luckily, it's super easy in your boy's editor. Yeah, so you can drag them around and stuff and fling them all over the place. And you can send them to f***ing orbit. Woo! Uh, is he coming back? Uh, oh, there he is. <laughs> and he's gone. Um, and you can try to drag him through the ground, which basically breaks everything. Kill me! <laughs> I just want to die! <laughs> Okay, so we got an editor to make creatures in. Now we just need to slap on some neat onto these bad boys and grant them the glorious gift of life only to kill them seconds later. When the AI overlords take over, I'm gonna be fucked, aren't I? I'm gonna be like the first to die. Ah, uh, now I'll be right. So in order for the players to be able to move around, they will be able to control the motors which are attached to the leg joint. So if you wanna move the leg, you can just kinda like rotate it like this and you, you get it, it's not hard. So I probably should have put limits on how far they can rotate each joint so they can't fucking do this. But I thought it would be funny to let them get their freak on. Why are we still here? Okay, so we know how the AI dudes can move, but how are they going to see? In order for the AIs to move intelligently, they will have to have a way of perceiving their environment. Without this, it would be like asking you to walk without your sense of sight, touch, balance, where the f*** your leg is, taste. I mean, that last one's not especially important, but you get the point. It would not be ideal. So what are the players going to see? We'll give them a sense of where the f*** their leg is by telling them the angle each joint is in and the current speed of each joint. We'll also have a very basic sense of touch, which tells it if the leg's touching the ground. It'll also know its rotation, so I guess you could equate that to like a sense of balance if you want to be bullshitty and poetic. And it also knows its current height off the ground. Okay, very nice. The f***ers can move and the f***ers can see. So it's party time. Okay, so I'm only going to be showing the top player of each round, but there are actually hundreds of players behind the scenes. Wait, let, let, let me show you. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, that was terrifying. Okay, sorry, I, I did not expect that to look like such a pile of limbs and death. And I don't know why I started recording this at Generation 4, but who the f*** cares? So we got a guy doing some leg rubbies, then a jump. Now he's going to whip out some leg claps. Classic stuff, good form. All right, so by generation five, they've figured out the rolly tactic. Good choice, really utilizing those inhuman knee joints. Very nice. So there are no real improvements until like generation 12 where they learn something which looks almost like a walk. Ah, uh, yeah, not gonna lie. It's probably not the most efficient walk I've ever seen. Oh, Wendy's fucked it. Oh wait, no, what a recovery. <laughs> fucking nailed that. So after about 30 generations, it's learned to walk like a human and actually looks really natural. I'm just kidding, we got a long way to go. Here he is. So he starts off with a flip, which everyone knows is the most efficient way to begin a running race. Then he does some L scissory do's for a few seconds and that somehow works. Then does a massive jump and fucking karate kicks the air. Then he seems to forget which way his body's supposed to go and then crawls off the screen like the abomination he is. And after 16 more generations of learning, the AI has learned to, uh, well, let me just show you. Oh, okay, so he just kind of falls over and then has a ru- I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> and he's gone. So it appears the AI has already figured out how to exploit the physics engine by, by rubbing its feet together, apparently. Fucking stupid. Evan, how did you fix this? Oh, that was actually really easy. Barely an inconvenience. I just didn't. So let's pray that doesn't happen again. Moving on. So... That was attempt one of learning, and well, there are some things which didn't quite work out the way I wanted to. And as fun as it is to watch the player distort the human figure into ways which will probably summon the devil, I want them to move somewhat like a human. I should also probably say that at this point, I am yet to decide on the aesthetics of this program, so that'll be changing multiple times from here and out. So you are welcome for that. Hey, this one's actually looking pretty good. Like, you could actually call that a walk. I'm feeling really good about this run through. I think this could be a w Oh my god, fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> oh. Feel a chain, stop my love. Ah! <laughs> oh, that's not good. Okay, so the Billie Jean runner actually turned out to a pretty decent run if you trained it for only 1,860 generations. Okay, I'm done, kind of. I've still got to make it a bit sexier, but she's working just fine. So let me tell you some of the changes I've made. Probably the most important change was the fact that players die if their heads or body touches the ground. This forces the AI to learn to walk upright because if they don't, they f***ing die, which I've found to be a pretty good motivator. I also f***ed up the neat algorithm a little bit, so fixing that is pretty important. Uh, the last thing I added, and I think you guys are going to love this, I added a f***ing death laser. Why? F*** you, that's why. I do what I want, and what I want is a death laser. And it certainly adds a sense of move where you f***ing die to the game. It's... It's good. I like it. Fuck and run, boy!
Okay, so it's time to make it sexy as hell. I would normally add a time lapse here of me creating the art and shit for it with some crisp royalty free music, but I tried that and my screen capture software died and I sure as hell ain't doing that again. So here it is. Yeah, so I went for a kind of sciencey laboratory sort of aesthetic. It's got your metallic floors, it's got your black and yellow tape because a code bullet safety is our top priority. I would wink, but I don't really have a face. <laughs> so wait, here we go. Safety is our top priority. You're welcome. And also, if you look to the left, you might have noticed the massive f***ing laser, which is evaporating everything it touches. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I'm proud of that fucking laser. But there is one more thing that I need to add. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Hiding faces really makes it so much more brutal. Holy shit, I love it. Ready? Watch this. No, run! Run, it's coming! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's so desperate. No! No! <laughs> What's also great about the laser is by changing its speed, you also affect how the players evolve. For example, if you increase the speed of the laser, the players will learn to desperately run to the right with very little concern for their lives. They kind of just dive to the right. But if you have a slow speed, the players will learn to walk in a slower, but more stable manner because they will die if they fall over. Okay, fuck, this has been a long video, but it is time to show off the final product. So I'll be showing you two evolution run throughs, one with a higher laser speed and one with a slower one. Because the laser goes really quickly, it hardly gives me any time to say anything, but I will do my best. So for the first generation, they are all chucked into the world with no knowledge of how to do anything, so understandably, pretty much all of them die instantly. The best the players can manage at this point is to simply fall to the right, which allows them to survive the wrath of the death laser for a little bit longer. Like I said before, having them all on the screen makes it difficult to understand what's going on, so let's just show the best of each generation. Honestly, nothing really improves for a while, mostly the AIs just learn to jump to the right instead of simply falling. It's not until generation 54 where we get our first attempt at an actual run. Too bad it's shit. However, over the generations, this is perfected. Although these runs aren't fantastic because they are kind of just running on their knees, which is easier for them because they don't have to balance on their legs. However, staying on their feet would allow them to run much faster. And it also means you won't need knee replacements by the age of 13, so win-win. However, after generation 85, nature finds a way. Look at him go, and he's dead. Uh, but now that they've figured out running on their feet is much faster, they start making progress really quickly. Unfortunately, it's as good as the AIs get, because at this speed, a more stable run is not an option. I was actually really surprised that they even made it this far. All right, let's watch the whole process again, but with a slower laser. Most of this is gonna be very similar, so I can't be bothered commenting on it, but you're a big boy, you can figure it out. All right, so yeah, this guy just fucking dies. Um, yeah, so the kind of only small improvements until generation 49, where it learns to run at a pace where it can keep up with the laser for a bit. That is until it trips and dies, like a fucking legend. By generation 80, there's this huge breakthrough which almost doubles the distance traveled. What, what changed, do you ask? I don't fucking know. It looks about the same to me, but evidently it's a fair bit faster. However, it still isn't fast enough because you can see the laser slowly closing the gap over time. It's not until generation 122 where the player learns a run which is actually fast enough to keep up with the laser. Although clearly it isn't foolproof because apparently it dies about 400 meters. Oh my God. Oh, I get it. I know what happened. F***ing stupid. So when I created the level, I just set the ground to be like a rectangle and just made it f*** off huge and then called it a day. It's not like infinite or anything. So I clearly didn't expect them to get this far. So that's, that's something. I'm not fixing that. F*** that. <laughs>
let me ask you a little question. You want to be learning, but you ain't got no damn time to be learning? Well, I'm with you all the way. Between going to uni, doing Code Bullet, and binge watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I haven't got no free time. But you know what they say? If you can't find time, make time. I'm talking on the bus, on the train, while driving a Tesla, while you're having dinner with your parents. All of this is wasted time, which you could be spending learning. Well, I have the solution for you. Brilliant.org's new offline courses allow you to do just that. Download any of their dozens of interactive courses through the mobile app, and you'll be able to solve fascinating problems in math, science, and computer science, no matter where you are or how bad your internet connection is. What's awesome about these courses is they're totally interactive. You use rockets to model algebraic functions, learn to program in Python by drawing stuff, and learn probability by playing casino blackjack. Or I guess you could continue to listen to your family talk about the property market. Sure, your choice. So if you want to support my channel and get unlimited access to all of Brilliant.org's in-depth math and science courses, you can head over to Brilliant.org slash code bullet to get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So that's pretty much it for this episode of AI Learn. Evan does code A code bullet? Yep. <laughs> Nailed that. I've still got a bunch of stuff left to do for this program. I've still got to integrate the editor and the program together and make it all sexy. So in the next episode, I'll be doing that. I'll also probably try out a few more creatures, see how they can learn to walk. If you have any ideas for creatures, which you want me to build and then AI-ify, uh, leave them in the comments. And if you're thinking giant dick monster, let me just say, I'm way ahead of you. Also, we just finished doing a code bullet puzzle thing to my Discord channel put on and it was amazing, but this video is already really fucking long and I want to do it justice. So that'll be in the next video. I'll be shouting out those people who won. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check it out on Discord, check it out on Twitter. I sent out a bunch of stuff. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be explaining that in the next episode. Bye.